Today, I want to talk about something that is vitally important for not just athletic performance, but for your entire life and indeed for your longevity, and that's muscle. You are going to lose muscle size and strength. Your metabolism will drop. Your posture will get worse. Everything in the in the context of nerve to muscle connectivity will get worse over time unless you are health lab. Now, many of you, when you hear the word muscle, think muscle growth and building big muscles. So when you hear the science of muscle and muscle hypertrophy, you might think, oh, well, I'm not interested in building muscle. But muscle does many critical things. It's important for movement. It's important for metabolism. In addition, muscle and musculature is vital for posture. And we don't talk about posture enough. We all have been told we need to sit up straight or stand up straight. But posture is vitally important for how the rest of our body works. It's vital to how we breathe. It's actually even vital to how alert or sleepy we are. I'd now like to shift our attention to how to use specific aspects of muscular contraction to improve muscle hypertrophy, muscle growth, as well as improving muscle strength. There are a lot of reasons to want to get stronger. And I should just mention that it's not always the case that getting stronger involves muscles getting bigger. There are ways for muscles to get stronger without getting bigger. However, increasing the size of a muscle almost inevitably increases the strength of that muscle, at least to some degree. Reasons why most everyone should want to get their muscles stronger is that muscles are generally getting progressively weaker across the lifespan. So when I say getting stronger, it's not necessarily about being able to move increasing amounts of weight in the gym. Although if that's your goal, what I'm about to discuss will be relevant to that, but rather to offset some of the normal decline in strength and posture and the ability to generate a large range of movement safely that occurs as we age. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we just tend to lose function in this neuromuscular system as we get older. And doing things to offset that has been shown again and again to be beneficial for the neuromuscular system, for protection of injury, for enhancing the strength of bones and bone density. So there are a lot of reasons to use resistance exercise that, that extend far beyond just the desire to increase muscle size. Because I know many of you are interested in increasing muscle size, but many of you are not. So there's an important principle of muscle physiology called the Henneman size principle. And the Henneman size principle essentially says that we recruit what are called motor units Motor units are just the connections between nerve and muscle. What this means is when you pick up something that is light, you're going to use the minimum amount of nerve to muscle energy in order to move that thing. Likewise, when you pick up an object that's heavy, you're going to use the minimum amount of nerve to muscle connectivity and energy in order to move that object. Now, if you continue to exert effort of movement, what will happen is you will tend to recruit more and more motor units with time. And that process of recruiting more neurons, more lower motor neurons, these lower motor neurons are in our spinal cord and they actually dump uh, a chemical, acetylcholine on muscle, cause the muscles to contract. As you recruit more and more of these motor units, these connections between these lo lower motor neurons and muscle, that's when you start to get changes in the muscle. That's when you open the gate for the potential for the muscles to get stronger and to get larger. It's really exciting is that in just the last three years or so, there's been a tremendous amount of information to come out about the practical steps that one can take in order to maximize the benefits of resistance exercise of any kind. There's a lot of information saying that you need to move weights that are you know, 80 to 90% of your one rep maximum or 70% or cycle that for three weeks on and then go to more moderate weights. There, there are a lot of paths. As, um, as some people say, there are a lot of ways to, to add up numbers to get 100. And what's very clear now from all the literature that's transpired, and especially from the literature in this last three years, is that once you know roughly your one repetition maximum, the, the maximum amount of weight that you can perform an exercise with for one repetition in good form, full, full range of motion, that it's very clear that moving weights or using bands or using body weight, for instance, in the 30 to 80% of one rep maximum, 
that is going to be the most beneficial range in terms of muscle hypertrophy and strength. So muscle growth and strength. And there will be a bias. If you're moving weights that are in the 75%, 80% range, or maybe even going above that 85 and 90%, you're going to bias your improvements towards strength gains. This is true. And if you use weights that are in the 30% of your one repetition maximum or 40% or 50% and doing many more repetitions, of course, then you are hypertrophy and what some people like to call muscle endurance. But that's a little bit of a complicated term because endurance we almost always think of as relating to running or swimming or some long bouts of activity. So 30 to 80% of one repetition maximums, it doesn't really seem to matter for sake of hypertrophy, except at the far ends when you're really trying to bias for strength. Now, it is clear, however, that one needs to perform those sets to failure where you can't perform another repetition in good form again or near to failure. So let's say you're somebody who's been doing some resistance exercise kind of on and off over the years and you decide you want to get serious about that for sake of sport or offsetting age-related declines in strength, the range of sets to do in order to improve strength, to activate these cascades in the muscle, ranges anywhere from two, believe it or not, to 20 per week. Again, these are sets per week, and they don't necessarily all have to be performed in the same weight training session. I will talk about numbers of sessions. So it appears that five sets per week in this 30% to 80% of the one repetition maximum range, getting close to failure or occasionally actually going to full muscular failure, which isn't really full muscular failure, but the inability to generate a contraction of the muscle or move the weight in good form. I'll go deeper into that in a moment. But about five sets per week is what's required just to maintain your muscle. So think about that. If you're somebody who's kind of averse to resistance training, you are going to lose muscle size and strength, your metabolism will drop, your posture will get worse, everything in the, in the context of nerve to muscle connectivity will get worse over time unless you are generating five sets or more of this 30% to 80% of your one repetition maximum per week. Okay, so what this means is for the typical person who hasn't done a lot of weight training, you need to do at least five sets per muscle group. Now, that's just to maintain and then there's this huge range that goes all the way up to 15 and in some case 20 sets per week. Now, how many sets you perform is going to depend on the intensity of the work that you perform. This is where it gets a little bit controversial, but I think nowadays most people agree and Dr. Galpin confirmed that 10% of the sets of a given uh, workout or 10% of workouts overall should be of the high intensity sort where one is actually working to muscular failure. So we can make this simple. Perform anywhere from five to 15 sets of resistance exercise per week, and that's per muscle, and that's in this 30 to 80% of what your one repetition maximum. That seems to be the, the most scientifically supported way of offsetting any decline in muscle strength, if you're working in the kind of five set range, and in increasing muscle strength when you start to get up into the 10 and 15 set range.